Let's call the meeting to order. This meeting is being recorded. I would ask if there's anyone else recording this meeting. Seeing none, if you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome, everyone. We do have some special recognitions this evening, and for that, I will turn it over to Dr. Brunel. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So it's my great pleasure, Amanda, perhaps if you want to go over to the podium. And just want to share with you, it's always an exciting night when we're recognizing students. And Amanda Healy is here. She is the Class of 2020 Mass Association of School Superintendents Certificate of Academic Excellence Awardee. Um, so I'm going to read to you some of the accomplishments that brought Amanda here, and I'm sure that you will be as impressed as I am. So Amanda's grade point average is currently 4.797. She's looking forward to going to college and double majoring in English and dance. She's got several top picks for colleges, University of Buffalo, Mullenberg College, Columbia, Hofstra, Skidmore, or Fordham. She'd like to be a dancer right when she gets out of school, but then eventually would like to become a book or newspaper editor or perhaps a journalist. She's involved in numerous clubs at Auburn High, including Student Council, National Honor Society, International Club, and was a member of the Humanities Scholars Collaborative and Yearbook Club in her junior year. She challenges herself in class as well with take, taking or having taken AP English Language, AP U.S. History, AP Biology, AP World History, AP English Lit, AP French, and AP Spanish. Wow. Wow. Outside of school, Amanda is a competitive dancer with Kathy Taylor Dance of School, um, School of Dance, excuse me, since second grade, and she participated in her church youth group during high school. She's volunteered for Relay for Life. She's written letters to Marine Corps recruits during boot camp, her older brother, being a Marine, and there was a great article recently that you hopefully saw featuring him and two other class of 2015 graduates. Um, she's performed with other dancers at nursing homes, been a part of the Dancers Against Cancer during the last two years, and has been a peer tutor in her junior year through National Honor Society. On top of that, I don't know where she finds the time, she has held down a part-time job at Shaw's Supermarket and as a dance assistant teaching students ages 3 to 15 years old. Um, so I, I tip my uh, cap to Amanda and her tremendous accomplishments. Also want to recognize her mom and dad, uh, Lisa and Tom Healy, in the audience. Uh, this is not their first visit to a school committee meeting to have a child recognized, but Amanda, kudos to you. Wonderful job. Thank you. Any comments for Amanda? <clears throat> Congratulations. Well done. Thank you. I, I would like to know how much caffeine you drink every day because that's a lot. I'm just, I don't think I've ever been that productive in my life. So you, obviously you're going to go far in life and you must be so proud, Mom and Dad. So. Mm -hmm. Thank Th you. Those accomplishments <laughs> sound like more than, like three students, not yeah. one. <laughs> that is amazing. Congratulations. Thank you. You're going to go far, that's for sure. Congratulations. You realize there's only 24 hours in a day, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, just making sure. So through the chair, Amanda, before you leave, if you want to come up, um, I think our chair would like to present you with this certificate and perhaps we could all I would love shake to. your hand. Congratulations. Thank you. What an honor. Congratulations. Thank you. Great job. Congratulations. Thank you. Wonderful. You make us very proud. <laughs> Good luck this year. <laughs> Congratulations. It's a privilege to know you. Did you want to say anything, Amanda? <laughs> <You're good. laughs> that truly is amazing. I just don't see how that much can be accomplished in, in, a, in a day or uh, an hour or a school year. It's just, it's amazing. Great job. You're going to do wonderful things and continue to make us proud. Okay. Are there any citizens' comments this evening? Seeing none, we'll move on to the student representatives report. Allie and Aaron. Alrighty, so to start off, NHS 
just received from a company we've gotten free stuff for for a while now. We in the beginning of the year we got free water bottles, and last year we got free T-shirts. But you know, as well as this year, we just received more free T-shirts. So everybody was quite excited about that. <laughs> They're the same as last year's, but they had more bubbly letters, so it was cool. <laughs> um, and they said what? <laughs> Auburn High School, and then no, it was like Auburn Rockets, and on the back it said Go Rockets, and oh. then there was like a whole bunch of sponsors. It was cool. Okay, great. Yeah. yeah. But we also are doing our annual adopt a family. So we, I just finished sending a grant or an application for the grant so that we could send soldiers um, overseas, you know, goodies for the holiday season to thank them for their services. So we're going to get the ball rolling on that soon. Um, as for Rockets to Rockets, uh, recently, it was last week, we had an all-school purple out day for a girl who attends our school. Her name is Maggie and she has Rett Syndrome. So to draw awareness to her and to celebrate her, we all wore purple and we all said hi to her at lunch and it made her day. She had lots of smiles and lots of pictures and it was, it was good to see a lot of um, students participating as well. Um, CARE, the CARE program that we um, hold for juniors and seniors was also today. What we do is we go to the fifth grade and we teach them strategies to deal with, say, self-esteem as well as go over the um, like awareness to drugs and alcohol, not necessarily as in-depth as an adult would, but kind of as a peer-to-peer -peer type thing where maybe they're not as comfortable talking to an adult, but if they want to talk to a teenager, like they, it's fun for them, it's fun for us, and it was really fun today. Um, student council today had their haunted hall, their annual haunted hall, from three to five, and we set up our band room area and chorus area with lots of candy and decorations and scared the kids a little with some crafts. <laughs> um, that was fun. And then on Saturday was the trunk or treat and the senior class's Disney breakfast. Um, and then a couple weeks prior, I know it's been a while, we had our homecoming assembly. And we had activities such as, you know, our teachers would put shaving cream on their face and then we'd have to throw cheese balls at them. <laughs> Mr. Kunar can tell you his experience. <laughs> um, we also had um, balloons tied to our ankles or like would get tied to the ankles and then a couple of um, representatives from each class would have to go around and chase each other and you had to try and pop the balloons. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> um, and then we also, Mr. Hanfield has more information on this too, but we introduced our new kindness program that's going on that was funded by um, Avery Pellegrino. I don't know the depth of it, but we really got introduced, you know, it's important to be kind and spread kindness, and that was really important. And, of course, we had the running of the bleachers, so to start off the whole assembly, we ran and had a good time. And then tomorrow, on Halloween, is the Humanities Scholars' first mm -hmm. meeting. Or, yeah. And for others, marching band just finished their season. Just this like past weekend, we had a doubleheader uh, championships on Saturday and Sunday. And on Sunday, we ended off our season with a clean four-star sweep in all captions, including best music, like visuals and all that. And we got a silver medal overall for the band, which was really exciting to cap off the season. and have our hard work like get a like reward for that. Good. For Model UN, a couple weeks ago we had our new delegates as well as returning ones participate in the conference at St. John's High School. Uh, as I explained last time, it's more of an introductory conference and getting introduced to the procedures of how you actually run a Model UN conference. Returning and senior delegates are preparing for br their conference at Brown University, which is next week, which kind of seems surreal but we're finalizing our preparations for that, including position papers, which uh, detail your topic and what your solution to the problem is, and that is due this Friday. And for the last thing, we are also preparing for our first overall group conference in St. John's Prep, which is in near Boston, without being December. So we're beginning to like recruit which members want to go to that conference, as well as how to as well as members who didn't go to St. Uh, St. John's, teaching them how to properly go to a uh, conference. And lastly, for Science Olympiad. So besides, we have weekly study meetings just to like make sure people are studying, but we have also begun preparations for an in-house conference in Auburn to, with other circle members before the state invitational in March. 
So I think around December or January, we're going to host a conference in Auburn and just get the nearby high schools also ready for invitations. Excellent. <laughs> Great report, as always. Lots going on. Any comments? I have a question for Allie. I know what the running of the bulls is, but I don't know what running of the bleaches <laughs> is. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, every year at the home, at homecoming, you know, the freshmen are typically, you know, booed because it's like, oh my gosh, you know. <laughs> so, um, the freshmen are usually, they will walk in last. I, thought, I used to think it was first, but anyway. Um, <laughs> you sit in your old bleachers, like, okay. So the homecoming assembly is set up in the gym, and we all have our own area of bleacher. Okay. So every year, you know, you, you run across the gym to your new seat. So like each grade has their own oh. section, and then the whole highlight of it is that the seniors get to run to their final Okay. Seats. <laughs> <laughs> so the bleachers aren't going anywhere. No, the bleachers aren't going anywhere. <laughs> Okay, thank you. <laughs> wow, I had no idea. <laughs> I'm going to have to witness this. <laughs> Any other questions or comments? Seeing none. Um, great report as always. Feel free to hang around or if you've got things to do, feel free to take off. Thanks again. <clears throat> I would now seek approval of the meeting minutes for October 2 and October 15. Make a motion to approve the meeting minutes for the last two meetings. Do I have a second? Yes, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And it is a vote. I abstain because that wasn't at the last meeting. And I will abstain from the one that I was not at. And now we move on to the superintendent's report. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So we have a few presentations tonight, and it is my um, sincere honor to welcome to the podium the Unified Sports um, Leadership Team, I will call them. So if we can have come up Brenna St. Pierre, Elise Whittemore, Emma Ganley, and teacher Mrs. Allen DeLuca, who are going to give you an update. I know they were here in the spring, having gone to uh, a program. They have continued uh, to be highly sought after in attending programs because of the leadership that each of them has shown. So I will turn it over to uh, all of them. Do I have to use this? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I'm just going to share with you the first slide essentially and let the kids take over. Uh, we're just going to share with you some experiences we've had um, since July and then share with you where we're headed as a district moving forward. Okay, so to start, we're going to share about the um, trip we went on in July to the Kennedy Compound in Hyannisport. Um, Brenna's going to start. Hyannisport, Hi uh. July 2019, Kennedy po Compound. Global event led by youth. Create, creating the past 50 years of Special Olympics in the next 50 years. Brought donors, advocates, youth, and education through leaders together. Salvation of women like you, 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 oh my God. Years Kennedy Shriver. A, mom, a moment of athletes to of total inclusion of all kinds. So to start, on the first day that we were there, um, that was when we really got to show and share our portion of the presentation. So it was the day, first day was networking, roundtables, and presentations. Um, we presented it was the youth base, so it was all of us. Um, me and Brenna represented Massachusetts for um, ARIAC Activation Council, and then Elise and the other U.S. ambassadors also came and presented. Um, so there was people from all over the world that were with us, um, all different educators, teachers, 
people from colleges all over were with us and we were presenting. Brenna and I got to share our leadership journey, how we got involved with Special Olympics, and we also got to share a story of friendship and like how Unified Champion Schools and our school in Auburn has brought us friendship. And we shared about how like we became such good friends. Um, we also, yeah, Elise was the MC. She led everyone. And a big portion of it was us inviting our shirts. They say Unified Generation. It was us inviting all of the um, adults around us to join us in making the world a more unified place and like starting off the revolution. Um, the next slide is pictures from our first day that we were there. So Brenna and I will tell you about some of them. So the first one on the left top corner, um, that was us presenting, telling our story. Okay, the bottom picture with Elise, Emma, and me, we were um, at round tables and sharing friendship with like what friendship mean about and what it meant to us. The top middle picture, um, that's a bunch of the U.S. ambassadors and us um, with Chastin Buttigieg. His husband is a presidential candidate. The bottom Sorry. middle picture um, is a bunch of us with Maria Shriver. Her brother Tim is in the top right picture. He's the um, band, or CEO. CEO of um, Special Olympics. And then the bottom right is um, Brenna, Miss DeLuca, and I um, just hanging out at the Kennedy compound. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so day two was when it really got fun. Um, <laughs> we started off at an inclusion service. There was a prayer celebration, spiritual celebration. That was really cool because a bunch of us got to be a part of it. We um, carried in like the unified flag. Elisa and a few of the others um, read and like gave um, readings at the beginning. Um, we had an opening ceremonies and then we were split into teams. Everybody that attended the weekend, we were split into like, teams by colors. So each of the youth um, leaders were in charge of a team, and we played all different games all day. We played um, volleyball, bocce, soccer, flag football, all different types of stuff. And it was really cool because it brought us all together in a way that you wouldn't normally. Like, there are people who were wearing dresses. There are people who came from across the country. There are people that had an intellectual disability and people who didn't. And all of us came together and played together at the same time, and you had no idea who had what, who was from where. It was really cool to see everyone like unified together and it really showed us like how important the unified movement is and what it really is and the impact that us as youth leaders can have on people everywhere. So that was really cool because we got to play with like all different Kennedy cousins, Shriver cousins, <laughs> like princesses from Italy, like all different people. And we like didn't even know who they were at first. And they were like, oh my goodness, like we know those people. Yeah, so it was really fun. Um, we also competed in a scavenger hunt with our teams. There was all different um, like objects that we had to find. Like we found a unified song, took a picture of us choosing to include different things like that. And my team actually won. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> um, <Go Auburn. laughs> yeah, so it was really fun. Um, we ended the or the afternoon. Um, we w got to go sailing on one of the Kennedy's boats, so that was a really cool experience that we wouldn't have normally gotten to go. So it was really fun and a bonding time for us. And we also got to tour um, JFK's house, which was very cool. So, not a movement for people with disabilities, it's from them, no longer a cause, it's a change, no longer a program, it's an invitation to live our lives differently by Tim Shriver. That was a quote from Tim Shriver, he gave us um, the first day that we were there and it kind of sparked us in how we wanted to have the weekend play out. Um, also, the pictures, the top left is us with our friend Sid, who is Elise's um, unified partner as a U.S. ambassador. 
Um, the picture in the middle is Miss DeLuca's team for the um, competitions all day. And then the picture on the right is um, all of us sailing on one of their sailboats. Um, that night, after we got back from the hotel and changed and everything, we went back to the Kennedy compound again um, for a dinner celebration. It was amazing. <laughs> um, we all got, the youth all got split up into different tables. The beginning of the weekend, we all kind of sat together like we were the youth leaders. Everyone knew who we were. But at this dinner, we got split up and we were, had to step out of our comfort zones and talk to adults from all over, people from all over. So that was really cool. Um, we listened to a bunch of different speakers, all like wrapping up the weekend, wrapping up the 50 years. There was people singing, dancing, all kinds of things. And we also had a five course meal, which is <laughs> very good. <laughs> um, yeah, there, it was very cool. Uh, all of the Kennedy siblings went up and spoke. Um, we had gifts to give out from the athletes to everyone else. It was a really cool experience. Um, we got to talk and share our stories with adults and people from all over. So that was really cool. Alrighty, so on top of going to Hyannisport this past July, Ms. DeLuca and my friend Sydney and I, we also got the opportunity to go to a youth marketing and strategies conference in New York City. Um, so it's basically just kind of focusing on how different groups and brands and organizations can market towards Generation Z. Um, so the picture in the middle is of me and Sydney in Times Square. And then all the way to the right is they had different vendors and people you could go and talk to. So that was ice cream from one of the vendors <laughs> um, that you could go and talk to. And then the conference itself was in Brooklyn. So the picture all the way to the left is of us at the conference uh, in Brooklyn. So again, basically YMS was just full of ways to market towards youth. So we got to hear from tons of different companies such as Crocs, Subway, uh, there's a speaker from Disney, and then there was also a portion where it was um, youth talking, so there was a teens of Instagram panel, so it was different people who have very, I don't want to say famous, but well-known accounts on Instagram, so they got to speak and kind of share how they got that way. Um, and then there was another young woman who was from Juve Consulting, and she actually started her own nonprofit as well as her own um, consulting agency. So she spoke and she showed uh, how she did that. And then, yeah, we got to connect with the different brands as well. So the reason we went to YMS was to be able to take that and take what we learned there and share it at the conference in Washington, D.C. So Sydney and I actually took our two favorite sessions that we attended and we created a presentation. So the first session that we attended that we really loved was turning cause campaigns into movements. So it was really focused on how you can start a movement from something you're passionate about. So we felt that was really fit with Special Olympics and Unified Champion Schools and really wanting to live in a unified generation. So we talked about that and that was given by a woman named Meredith Ferguson. And she has a website called DoSomething.org and it's really interesting. It just gives you tons of easy things that you can do to spread kindness and positivity in your schools and your work environment. Uh, so she shared that with us. And then the second session that we attended that we really loved was about the power of music and it was from a presenter from DC and he shared how it's so easy for anyone to connect to music. It's really intergenerational and music will take you back to a certain time and place. If you think of a song right now, or if you listen to a song right now, you would be able to think of the last time you heard it or something like that. So he really focused on that and the power that music will have on people. So together, Sydney and I ran a presentation. We explained those things. And we had each youth ambassador and mentor that was in DC pick a song that they felt really represented inclusion or would empower them before a unified game or anything that they felt went with inclusion in unified sports. So they picked that and they drew about it. And we created a playlist together. So this is a QR code to access the playlist and it has all of our different songs so that they can take it back to their schools and they can share what empowers them and what empowered, because it's kind of cool to see that, oh, what empowers somebody living in California also really empowers somebody living in Massachusetts and they can connect to that. So we created that and it was a really cool way to see how many things we have in um, common and be able to share what we learned at YMS through that. So that was really awesome. So with that, we can segue into Washington, D.C. So this past week, last week, Ms. Luca, Sydney, and I got the opportunity to go to Washington, D.C. And it was really focusing on leading the unified generation. 
So the event had two separate parts. The first two days were kind of a training, workshops, um, and a lot of preparation for the actual conference ahead because the second two days was a conference and it was led by the Youth Ambassadors. So the first days we attended some public speaking workshops. We continued to develop our elevator pitch. We learned how um, better ways for youth to use their social media to promote positivity and promote the Infi generation. And then we did some goal setting about what we're gonna do in the next year as Youth Ambassadors. Uh, so that's when Sydney and I got to present our workshop on YMS, so we presented that to the other youth ambassadors. We also got the opportunity to create a congratulations project video. So there's this challenge out there, a challenge called the congratulations project, and it's just sending positive messages and positive videos to parents who are expecting a child with Down syndrome. So it's really telling them that there's nothing wrong with uh, expecting a child with Down syndrome, that you should be happy. There's so many positive things you're going to have. So it's really just spreading positivity to them so that, you know, when they find out that their child has Down syndrome, they're not saying, they're not hearing the words, I'm sorry, they're hearing congratulations. Like, there's so many things that, had, that lie ahead. Uh, so it was a really great way. So we made a video um, and we were able to share that. And then the last thing we did was we prepared for the speaking roles that we were going to have in the next two days. So Sydney and I, we got to lead a 30-minute unified TED Talk. So it basically was a TED Talk, but we kind of talked about what got us involved in Special Olympics and Unified Champion Schools. I got to talk about our homecoming assembly last year and how we had the national banner presentation. Um, so we got to share that, and then we had a little Q&A. And that was one uh, aspect. And then the poster in the bottom right, they had a gallery room, so each youth ambassador had a poster kind of featuring them so that the different adults there could get to know the youth here and then if they wanted to go and talk to them later they had that face um, and connection to go and talk to them and then the other thing Sydney and I got to do was we got to lead an inclusion tiles workshop so Emma has the inclusion tiles here but we ran a workshop with all the adults on how um, on the tiles and they're really cool because everybody interprets that interprets them differently so we got to do that and it was really awesome and then there was also a film screening so we got to watch different featured films of the Youth Ambassadors. And actually, Sydney just had a film made about her last month, so we got to see that, which was pretty amazing. So yeah, here's some pictures. Um, we got to do a little scavenger hunt on the National Mall. So those are some different things. And then here's some more pictures. So the top uh, left is of all the Youth Ambassadors and Youth Leaders. Um, and then the bottom left is us in front of the White House. And then after we gave the unified talk, we actually got to meet with Tony Reale. So he's from Around the Horn. He's the he's host. The yeah, he's the ESPN host for Around the Horn. So we got to meet with him. He was sitting in the front row of the unified talk. And I was really <laughs> scared before, but he actually helped out a lot. Um, he was really encouraging and awesome. And then we're in front of the Lincoln Memorial. So yeah, yeah. that was our two trips that we just took. So this is our fifth year of Unified Champion Schools at Auburn High School. And so we think that instead of changing mindsets, why not grow and shape them? So get schools involved in Unified Champion Schools at an earlier age. And so as a district, um, we're going to move forward <laughs> with that. This was a quote that I think is super impactful by the Surgeon General of the United Nations that the biggest disease in America is not cancer or heart disease, it's isolation. And truly, Unified Champion Schools promotes um, inclusion of all people and to prevent something like isolation. Again, same, same theme, some great <laughs> pictures. Um, and I think the real purpose, and we say that it's a movement by Special Olympics, however, people tend to think that Special Olympics is just the inclusion of people with disabilities. And the focus is really the inclusion of all. And so that's really the message that I think we need to make clear. Because we talk about Special Olympics so often, the movement of Special Olympics is more about the inclusion of all people, that everyone has value. So there are three core components of Unified Champion Schools, and Elise and Sid and Brenna all presented on this um, at a youth conference, so I'm going to let them talk about what that is. So to become a unified champion school, you have to meet three requirements. Um, one is having a unified sports team. So like at Auburn, we have unified basketball and track, and we also compete in bocce. Um, there's also inclusive youth leadership, like our Rockets to Rockets club, 
our unified team, us being on the Youth Activation Council. Our student council also participates in bocce and different events through the MASC. Um, and wh whole school engagement is a more broad, like bigger example. Our pep rally last year was that our upcoming basketball game where students are coming, that is uni whole school engagement. It's more than just coming and watching them play. It's engaging with the people playing on the team sitting at them with lunch and not just sitting there but having a conversation and getting them involved in everyday life not just like congratulating them for doing their everyday life so these are the ways that as a district we're planning to move forward um, in addition to our unified basketball team at the high school and our bocce tournament in the winter and our track team in the spring, we are now having unified PE in our schools um, from the elementary school on up. Swiss just started their first unified PE class last week and we got some really wonderful positive feedback from that. Um, the middle school is going to have a unified basketball team in March and in May we are hosting our first unified school day games. Um, we'll talk more about that later. Um, inclus inclusive youth leadership is our Rockets to Rockets, which we have in grades three, all the way up through 12 now. And whole school engagement, like Emma said, some of the examples are our Kindness Week, our Respect Campaign, uh, the Fans in the Stands, and Awareness Campaigns. At the high school, we've met with a lot of success because we've had collaboration between our unified sports teams, our student council, and our Rockets to Rockets program. I think that's really vital to make um, the Unified Champion School Sustainable. Just a little bit about what Unified PE is. Um, it's not, I like to explain it. I use this quote all the time. Um, it's not being invited to the dance, it's being asked to dance. So we can be inclusive, but to be unified, we have to really engage with each other and have meaningful interactions. And so that's what Unified PE is about. Um, so next trimester, the high school is going to have a unified PE class. There's 30 kids enrolled, and um, I'm really looking forward to seeing it in action. Uh, this is just a quote from a, a unified PE student from another district, um, but the one I like is because it's from our district. Um, our un unified PE teacher from Swiss had emailed me, and she said, we had our first class. It was one of the best 45 minutes of my 21-year teaching career. And she shared some pictures, and it really made my day. <laughs> So our plans as a district, I'm excited to share that on November 21st at 6, we are hosting a unified basketball game against the Auburn Public Schools staff. So we have teachers signed up from every school who are going to come play against our basketball team. Right now we have vice principals signed up to be our reps. Um, <laughs> and I think it's going to be really great. We have so much support already, so hopefully we get a lot of um, fans in the stands to support our kids and our teachers and um, that's going to be sort of a fundraiser to kick off um, to actually help us support the school day games which we're having in May and it will also help us raise money to support the polar plunge uh, we have awareness days and kindness week set up Loretta Claiborne's coming to speak she is a global ambassador for Special Olympics she was one of the first ever Special Olympics athletes uh, if you have a chance to Google her, her message is pretty awesome. There's a Disney movie made about her, so we were hoping that we could share some of that movie with the elementary levels, because they won't be able to hear her speak. Um, and like we said earlier, Rockets to Rockets and Mentor Partnerships and the elementary levels. And the last thing is the school day games, May 29th. It's on the calendar. And the rain date is June 1st. Students with disabilities and their chosen partners will partic participate. And Kindergarten first and second, it's going to be more like a field day, um, focusing on gross motor skills. And then 3 through 12, it's going to be a track meet style. The purpose of Unified PE is also to help kids prepare for this event. So they're not just being thrown into a unified track meet. They're going to practice their 50 meter dash. They're going to practice doing a shot put. And their best times are going to be taken by their PE teacher and submitted to the Special Olympics. And then they will make brackets. So it's competitive and meaningful. And kids will be able to, yes, get on the podium and actually earn first, <laughs> second, and third <laughs> place. So we're really excited about that. And we've had, I've had overwhelming support um, from teachers in the district. There's, a, there's five committees that each have a representative 
from every school in the district. So people are willing to help and volunteer their time to make this happen. So that sort of buy-in has been great. And so we all would like to say thank you <laughs> for supporting us and letting us take this journey and bring it here, hopefully, and beef it up some more as the years go on. So that's it. <laughs> That was sorry a great, if it was so long. Great presentation. <laughs> there was a lot to share. No, that was great. Um, it was it was um, more, more than welcome. Um, just fantastic. Every time you present in front of us, it's it's moving, it's emotional, um, and it's just great to see your spirit of of kindness, um, giving unification. I guess we'll say the the whole movement is just something, and you're very complimentary of some of the people that you pointed out um, in the PowerPoint, um, in the presentation, but really. All the compliments should go to you. You're just some of the, the nicest people, and you make us very proud. If if the world had more more people like the four of you, it, what what a place, what a great place it would be, mm -hmm. honestly. And so, I've had a um, interesting couple days, some highs and some lows, mostly mostly some lows with some um, some things that happened not very very close to me, but kind of outside of my circle. And this is just the greatest. Um, the greatest cure to, to anyone who's failing down because it's just the greatest movement and I appreciate everything that you do. And before I turn it over um, to my esteemed committee, I would just like to request that um, at the end of the comments we could get a picture of the four of you up here with us. I noticed mom and dad, Brenna's mom and dad were trying to get some shots. <laughs> I think this would just be a much better backdrop to take pictures from. So at the, at the conclusion of the comments and congratulations. If I could have the four of you just come up here, that would be great. And I would be honored to have a picture with you. Thank you. Any comments from the committee? Yeah, I have a couple things. Um, so are you guys all seniors? What year? Yes. So do we have a plan for next year? Yeah, we have some like this. There's still, okay. there, be, people are knocking at my door. Like, oh, what can we do? Can yeah. we try this? Sometimes we have to make sure what we do now is good before we start adding more. Mm -hmm. I'm not. I'm eager to add more, but I just want to make sure what we do, we do well first. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Also, the the part about um, encouraging parents expecting children with Down syndrome and special needs that is just makes me want to cry. Like, I mean, as a mother to be in the past, it was one of my worst fears. But you guys really shedding light on the whole thing and taking the stigma away would be just wonderful. So I I really. And just kudos to you guys for doing that. But, um, thank you. Just thank you for everything you do, and I'm so glad this has come about. I mean, I never saw anything like this when I was still teaching, so this is just wonderful, and God bless you all. There are 7,500 schools in the country right now that have a unified, uh, that are unified, so that's not a tie. I would like to, obviously, me personally, I've seen what it can do, and I do think it can change the culture and community for yeah. the better. So the goal is, I think the next goal is 10,000, and then we'll go from there. Wow. Um, and I think by the end of our year, we could add four more schools to that. So mm -hmm. trying to do our part, but I think the more we share with the community and the surrounding schools, um, the better, so that other people can have the same opportunity. And see, it works well. It, it flows naturally. It's not a big forced issue people just want to do it and that's yeah. great I mean we have 35 kids on our unified basketball team which mm. makes it a little bit <laughs> <laughs> um, clearly but uh, yeah. you don't want to say no mm. yeah I think yeah. Um, so having watched you guys go from five years ago start to where you are now I just think it's amazing it's an, uh, to be able to say that you guys had an idea and talk about running with it. I mean, you were at the Kennedy's house, you were in DC, and <laughs> New York, international ambassadors. I, I'm just so proud, and I hope that it goes without saying that if there is anything that any of us can do to support you, you you've got it right here. Don't watch the so, basketball game. I, don't <laughs> the date. <so. laughs> I feel like it's been successful because we've had so much support. We'll keep yeah. asking. <laughs> to say like seeing things lately on social media um, the purple day for Maggie and um, I just saw the unified gym class from Swiss and a couple of the parents were actually talking to me about how wonderful it was mm -hmm. um, I just it's amazing it makes me so proud to be from Auburn you guys are going places 
Um, and again, thank you so much. I think this is probably one of my favorite presentations every time you guys come. Mm -hmm. I just have yeah. one more thing. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, my daughter's at the middle school, and what like the biggest club is the Rockets to Rockets, mm -hmm. and it is hard to get into that club, and everyone wants to participate, and um, and she's in the club, and very proud that she's in the club. So um, it really is such a wonderful thing that you've started, Ellie. Mm -hmm. So happy. <laughs> <for you. laughs> Thanks. It's been great. It's, it's it's so rewarding for me as well. So, for some, you know, selfishly, it's like I, you guys like it too, I can't get enough. So, it makes yeah. my day, like, when I got the email from the, the PE teacher, so it was like, perfect timing. I was like, this is awesome, I really, yeah. Um, it makes it all worth it every day, so. So to, to echo some of the sentiments over here, yeah, it's a great presentation, and I believe as a whole, it's 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 one of our favorite presentations. So come back as often as you like. Um, it, it's always a bright spot in our meetings. Dr. Brunel, did you want to close with anything? Just I echo all of the comments that you said. I actually can't believe, um, Ali, that it's been five years uh, that this has gone. But just tremendous kudos to you three young ladies. Uh, you have really been the leadership, along with Mr. Luca, who has been there, but really helping to change the culture. And it really is wonderful. And actually, uh, Dr. Chamberlain and I got a copy of the video on Saturday of um, a unified sports in action at Swiss. And as we were texting awesome. back and forth saying it was just pure love and joy. joy. It was really yep. awesome, really awesome. So great job. Thanks again. And if we could get that picture, I would be honored. C come right around this way, if you would. Elaine, is there room for them to get through there? Oh, yeah. <coughs> Dad, can you get the whole table? Should we pull it in a little bit? I can do uh, I, whatever works for you. Oh, we can. Everyone could kind of squeeze in. Okay, did you have your camera in the kitchen? Yeah, I never grew up. What can I say? <laughs> Thank you. Thank okay. you. Awesome. <laughs> Great job. Great job. Great job. Great job. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Nicely done. Nicely done, everyone. <coughs> when I was dating Ronnie, he hadn't met me yet. He came to school to check me out. And his brother was at the school, and he said, "Now stand right here. You'll see us. She's going to bring the kids down for lunch. This was just when we were allowed in the school." And Thank you. I went Good back. night. Thank Bye. you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Great job. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. Bye. And he told his brother, "He says Bye. I didn't see her. I was the same height as the kids. I thought I was one of the kids." <laughs> All right. What a refreshing little presentation that was. <laughs> and moving on. So, um, continuing with uh, the great news of this evening, uh, you will all remember that just a uh, little over a year ago, we all attended on Sunday, October 21st, the final culminating uh, program of the NEASC visit. So I'm pleased to share that Mr. Spencer Kennard and Mrs. Melissa LeBohm are here along with Mr. Hanfield to give an update. Um, as noted in here, the NEASC accreditation has been granted. I think you all remember from back then what a tremendous job they had done in preparing for it. So I'm going to turn it over to uh, Mr. Kennard, Mrs. LeBohm, and Mr. Hanfield to provide an update post visit. <laughs> <laughs> so Melissa and I were like, man, that's a tough act to follow yeah, following yeah. them. <laughs> and just a like 30 second story so we had we the people speeches on Wednesday when Elise was in DC and she actually FaceTimed into the class with her group so she wouldn't miss her speech so that's like so I like I you know it's yeah. it, she's unbelievable mm -hmm. and you know and the rest of them are as well but that's just one example of Elise like not missing any work she came back with all of her work done and everything else so just kudos to those uh, to those guys so yeah. all right so 
The verdict is in. <laughs> Dr. Rinald stole our thunder. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. We wouldn't expect any yeah. less. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm sure there'd be some news reports or something like that. But yes, um, yeah, but, uh, but we were awarded our continued accreditation, uh, and we have our, uh, our letter of approval and then a, a beautiful certificate um, that they provide for us to, uh, oh, yes. uh, to continue that. So we'll be good for... Uh, about another uh, 10 years, so about another decade. So just sort of a quick kind of recap of the process we went through. We spent a few years working on that massive self-study, looking at every aspect of the school and getting the whole faculty involved in writing this massive report, which you all, I think I saw and read it there too. Um, and when we had the visitors come in, they were here for, you know, of course, about three or four days or so in October of last year. You know, they met with you guys. and. Um, went through many meetings and panels, they shadowed students, they interviewed anyone they could possibly find, I think, and think of, uh, <laughs> parents, you know, students, faculty, community. Uh, they wrote a report at the end of their visit um, saying their findings, how they found us to be in terms of meeting certain standards, as whether or not our report was actually accurate, and based on those findings, we were actually awarded that continued accreditation. We were in good shape. Um, so we shared a few pictures too that we, we took during it. So obviously they're welcome uh, signed when they came in. Um, all the uh, you know information about our school uh, and a small gift that we gave the visiting committee because they did give up you know three days essentially of their life to come to Auburn and to uh, be a part of our school community. And our our presentation room was um, the what was his title? Oh, the chair. Oh, yeah. Well, the, oh. the chair said that this was the nicest uh, facility that they had ever, that he had ever been to, and he had been mm -hmm. to over 20, uh, 20 visits. And so he really wow. just was very, um, very complimentary of our presentation room and the setup that we had. And, uh, you know, that goes a lot to uh, the custodians and everyone else for getting that ready uh, for us and um, getting it ready to go. Um, we had, of course, pictures of all the teachers, and I don't know if everyone got to uh, poke their head into the presentation room, um, but every single teacher is pictured on uh, on the, a bulletin board, and as the visiting committee came in, they would initial, just make sure that they talked to every single person in the school. Uh, on the other side, there was uh, administration um, as well, and support staff uh, were also included. And so we just had basic information, uh, what you, uh, what you teach, how long you've been teaching, favorite ice cream flavors, things like that. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, and their schedule, of course. Yeah. And we have one teacher that didn't like ice cream. We'll, we'll put that one. I'm not sure. They noticed too. The visiting committee noticed an ask. They, they were very concerned about someone not liking ice cream. <laughs> um, we had a beautiful display of basically, yeah, kindness, um, kindness mm -hmm. descriptions that students had written. Um, so we thought that that was a, just a perfect thing for the visiting committee to see. So we rolled that right into the presentation room as well. Um, there are a couple of videos that we'll just skip, but they're included in the slides that we shared uh, with Mrs. Ottner, so she can um, send that out to you guys as well. Okay. Um, it was, of course, every classroom was decked out with our new car um, posters, which had community academics and respect. And so that would you know, demonstrate that we had core values on the back of all the student IDs. They also had car printed on the back of them as well, which was really nice of uh, Cass and Foster to do that for us. Case and Foster, excuse me. And my wife made them some treats as well, because <laughs> treats go a long way for this <laughs> um, And again, our opening video, which I think we all saw, um, that's included in here, just so you have it. Um, that was during the opening presentation. Um, so we just wanted to highlight a few of the commendations that we received and a few of the highlighted commendations. And so there were there were quite a few to go through. And so we just picked about uh, two per slide. And there are more that didn't make it onto the slide as well that are, that are featured in the presentation. Uh, but these are a few of the highlighted ones that we wanted to share. Um, we really, they really, and I believe they started off with this, um, just the overall involvement of the student body and faculty and the ability for us all to shape the school culture together and they really like that that notion that we were able to again be a community and you know give community ideas because sometimes um, you know the community culture is driven by you know one person okay or one group and but they really like the inclusiveness of how the how the ideas come through and so that was a, a real testament to um, to Mr. Hanfield for letting us again like include the whole student body um, in the decision making including giving them all surveys 
giving parent surveys, teacher surveys, uh, to help, again, work on our uh, school culture and our 21st century um, goals. And then another thing that they mentioned time and time again, and, and I think that you know, as teachers we really value um, the opportunities that we have for authentic learning and learning that goes beyond the classroom. And I think that the, the students who just presented, like what a great example mm -hmm. of them using authentic learning. And so you know, it's not just you know, in one subject, but throughout the board uh, where we have numerous opportunities for students to experience um, authentic learning. And so that, that word and that phrase just kept popping up time and time again. And so I wanted to make sure uh, that we shared uh, shared that, and especially as we are, you know, promoting citizenship and digital citizenship and everything else in our school, um, we thought that that was a just a really great one for for us to consider, and really just, it goes out to um, the Auburn community for you know not just again the school but all the businesses that help us with authentic opportunities as well. Um, More pictures for visit. Yeah. Okay. So, there's yeah. a couple of pictures for our visit too. So earlier, around the time you guys were there on Sunday when we had a welcome reception, um, we had uh, volunteers from all different student groups, clubs, activities throughout um, the school that came and just set up booths and came and talked to all the members of the visiting committee telling them what we're working on, what they're doing, and we were amazed by the amount of kids that gave up you know, their Sunday afternoon, to, or Sunday, yeah, Sunday afternoon to come in and spend time and to kind of show what we do and showcase um, the different things. So, you know, Sally was enough. Yeah, of course, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of stuck in there. Um, and some of the, a lot of the other commendations they said to regard um, revolved around our instruction um, and what our needs and the things that we had there, too. They were really impressed with a one to one iPad initiative that we have, obviously, in the district and the fact that it's so well supported. Um, but in addition to that, too, things like the amount of instructional materials teachers have that, for the most part, if we need something, um, you know, the district has been very, very supportive in allowing us to get that, whether it be textbooks or technology or things like that, that we're not, it's very rare that we hear no. Sometimes I'd be like, oh, wait a little bit, but it, we're really well supportive. And, you know, they were really, really impressed by that. And a lot of teachers in smaller, more, you know, side conversations commented that they wish they had that in their district they were going back home to. So we were really happy to see that that was recognized and appreciate, you know, all the support you guys give us in, those, in that area. Um, and as well, too, they also commented time and time again, going back to what uh, Spencer said earlier, the level of student engagement, student involvement, um, that we you know, constantly are asking kids to reflect on their learning, to be involved, and to collaborate in things, and they, give, they have options that we're presenting to them sometimes. So the fact that it's not just totally teacher-driven, but that we're constantly trying to pull in and engage our students in as many ways as possible and allow as much student-led activity as possible as well. So it was nice to see that the hard work we've been doing with that is, is being noticed as well. It's been an important um, initiative for us. Absolutely. And I think sometimes we forget, you know, so many schools and so many people that I talk to are still so impressed that we have a one-to-one -one iPad initiative. And for us, we've had this since 2014. Just it just yeah. seems like the normal now. Mm -hmm. And and we forget this, you know, many schools do not have that. And it, it's such a blessing uh, to be able to have these devices. So, you know, when people come here and they make a big deal about it, like, you know, you forget that, that many districts do not have the ability to provide those for the students. Um, a few more clubs, again, that showed up for the uh, freshman math team and the National Honor Society. Okay. Um, so a few more commendations. Uh, again, we always promote, of course, safety um, and respect in our school culture and our school community. And of course, it's nice to be commended on that for the fact that it's something that we all work really hard to do um, and so, again, for them to notice that and take note and put that as a highlight of recommendation, I think goes uh, goes a long way. Uh, and then, of course, just the overall sense of pride in the school uh, that's not only modeled by the faculty, but with the administration um, and the through the wide offerings of different clubs and you know the, the support of different events. And I think that you know they really noticed the fact that you know all these clubs are here. The students were excited to talk about their clubs. And they were really, you know, engaging with the with the visiting committee, and I know for sure that went a, a long way with them. And it helped to have uh, student meetings that were happening during activity period. Um, student council, at least, was actually leading in Emma were leading a student council meeting in the cafeteria, and the visiting committee, you know, poked their heads out, and you know, they were doing a whole community building thing, and they were they were totally into it. And so it just, you know, it wasn't a show. It's it's something that happens every day in our school. And I think that you know they, they got that that we weren't just you know putting on this fake facade that they you know we really truly do love our school and we love our community and we want to be there and we want to help out the students and build uh, build something great together. 
and there's got and then um, Janice King also provided a beautiful spread of food mm -hmm. um, just to, to thank her and her staff for doing that. Um, so all their small accommodations and things that they recognized there um, were, to build off what Spencer said, the amount of diverse um, offerings that we had, whether it be clubs to athletics, you know, just extracurricular activities, they couldn't get over the number of opportunities for students to be involved um, at every level in every possible way. And, you know, we agree that that's something that, that we spent a lot of time, and I think as a faculty, we really um, like what we do, all the love what we do, really, um, yeah. and also enjoy spending time with the kids and think you know, about the number of hours people give up to be here and to be there for certain things, especially this time of year with homecoming and things like that. And um, but the kids love it and the kids appreciate it and they're involved. And it's nice to see um, that they you know, notice that as they were on their visits. Um, and also the second piece they came back to, which goes back to that support piece earlier, um, they really commended us very you know well on the fact that we had such a strong working relationship and really productive working relationship between students and faculty, us with you, know, you guys, with central office, with the community, I mean, really just everyone is really works well together um, in this town and the district and that we're lucky to have so much support, you know, whether it be funding, whether it be just, you know, emotional support, business support, <laughs> of people just being there and being present for stuff um, that, you know, we don't take it for granted. And it was, you know, it's nice to see that it's, you know, it's, it's noticed that they really, you know, appreciated that and recognized it as being such a strong thing in our, in our district. Um, so a few of the recommendations made, and again, these were just uh, the, the highlighted ones um, that we included, and you know, a lot of them were were, were certainly uh, repetitive. And of course, we you know, part of the NEASC uh, process is again a peer evaluation, and so it's always great to get criticism on how we can be um, how we can be better. And so the first one um, that I, we just wanted to quickly talk about of creating and implementing formal timelines and, and reviewing and revising core values, beliefs, and school-wide rubrics. Well, these were new, um, you know, core values and, and, and the school-wide rubrics were new, and so, of course, we hadn't, you know, put in a timeline yet to, to revise them. So, you know, things like that are, are, are great that they notice that, but it's, it's by no means a, a massive black marker, you know, a strike or anything like that um, against us. And so that's something that over the next couple of years, uh, when and we'll explain the, the reporting um, session in just a moment, uh, but over the next couple of years, that's stuff that we will work on in order to implement these timelines um, that they gave us. Oh, yeah. And then the vision of the graduate piece too is coming with, they've just changed their standards and the way they're doing stuff. So that's something that didn't exist for this visit, but will be coming for the next one too, as we look at and see, you know, what do we envision our graduates? What do we want, skills we want them to have, looking at 21st century thinking pieces and citizenship. So that's something we'll get to kind of Evolve. It's, I think already in the works of a lot of things there too, but it'll be nice to be able to sort of um, define that and be able to show that moving forward. But that's a new piece that we didn't um, have this time that we'll have in 10 years. Absolutely. Um, and then just another one that we want to just mention was you know, the idea of having a formal time for students to make a formal connection. Again, this, this is the language of the standard um, with a faculty member. And of course, this happens informally all the time. Uh, but again, to say, like, again, there's a formal time set aside uh, for students to make those connections. And, um, and we'll talk about that more in just more in a second. Yeah. So sort of our to-do list, we're done with that piece of it, but the next 10, you know, 10 years began, or began really the, state, the second they left, luckily or unfortunately. Um, so our to-do list has already started. We need to look through, we've begun looking through the recommendations that they've given to us, trying to prioritize, you know, are there some things that we've already done since their visit? Right, it's been, you know, almost a year. There's some things that we've already made progress on. So kind of checking them off the list and then looking back through and saying, you know, with what's left, you know, what are our priorities? What do we want to tackle first? You know, and where we kind of want to head over the course of these next nine years, really, at this point. Um, and then beyond that, identifying who's responsible for these changes. Is it coming you know, from administration? Is it a faculty you know, initiative as well, or community? Um, and kind of just nailing down the people that we need to involve. And then with that, action plans, timelines, and all the steps necessary. Um, and within that next 10 years, we are responsible for a two-year report, giving them update as far as what we've tackled, where we're at, and then a five-year report as well um, before they come back again five years later. And we can respond to the report with the following words. So you can either mark it as completed, and again, with a, a brief description on how it's moving forward um, in progress. So again, what are you doing? Uh, plan for the future, so tabled, but we're gonna work on it. Rejected, and then no action. And um, the rejected and no action, I, I think are, are rarely, if ever, used. 
Uh, but again, they're, um, they're, they are options if, if, uh, if they're choose to do so. But they, you know, they did give us a, a response to, you know, to, um, sorry, they did give us the ability to respond right away before the draft became final. And because they can't see everything. And one of the things that they said was, oh, um, you're not recognizing student achievement a lot. And Melissa and I talked with Casey, and we're like, "What? Did they miss the academic hall of fame?" Like, we're like, "Right." Social media, we blasted them all right. and the these, social, and so all this we, evidence. So I sent them a ton of yeah. screenshots of everything. And they're like, "Oh, so they immediately like just scratched that mm -hmm. from the record." And I was, you know, for us, we were just like, "Wow!" <laughs> like, all the time. And, and you know, and again, maybe they just didn't happen to be on there. But you know, for you know, for not recognizing student achievement, we thought that was a, a quick one. And then again, so we don't even need to provide any. Of, that's now included in the report as us meeting. Um, that standard. So, uh, I mean, again, Amanda being here tonight, that was recognizing student achievement right there. So, um, so again, they were very, we thought, very fair in, 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 in allowing us to quickly rebuttal. Um, another one they immediately uh, got rid of was the um, hiring an additional IT person, which was uh, Maureen Elliott, who was hired um, at almost at the time that they were there last year. So, again, that was something that they, um, they struck from, uh, from the report, and they added that into uh, meeting the standards. And to sort of follow up on some of the progress that's already been made, um, one of the things that Spencer mentioned was our need. They wanted to create some type of a formal program. Like he said, it happens informally all the time. We definitely feel that pretty much every student has someone they go to more often within the building. But to make a formal process, last year we began a program called Restorative Justice um, in our building and it was integrated or implemented all the freshman home bases where a couple times a month freshmen would go to a home base with their teacher or two teachers. Um, we're in home base together for about better or for worse, I think we're stuck together forever. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> it's fine. It could, could be worse people, right? Yeah, that's right. Um, <laughs> uh, but it was basically working with our students um, in a, a discussion format to tackle different topics throughout the school year, things that were pertinent to them, everything from, you know, the transition from middle school to high school, what does that look like, what are you struggling with, you know, what are you excited about, to, um, you know, final exams, um, stress relief, you know, academic integrity, decision making, and things like that. And it gave them a chance to sort of open up and get to know each other a little bit better, get to know us a little bit better. Um, this year we've been able to continue with that. So we still have, we're able to keep our same home base, we're still together with them, and we've continued these chats. Um, but the topics have sh shifted slightly because it's new topics, they're sophomores, so we've kind of gone a little bit deeper with certain things with them. Um, in addition, Freshmen are also in home bases as well, um, doing these circles and restorative um, justice circles. So for right now, it's all, actually every Wednesday, all of our students, freshmen through seniors, go to home base for half hour, 33 minutes, I yeah. think, or something specifically, um, go there and they meet with their home base teachers. Two out of those four, um, or every other week, the freshmen and sophomores have these circles and have these chats. So it's a time to either informally visit with the teacher on the off weeks and kind of get to know them in a less formal setting, or it's a formalized um, circle where every sophomore is discussing the same topic. Um, it's maybe in a slightly different way, depending on the teachers. Our juniors and seniors aren't currently doing restorative justice circles formally, but they've been doing a lot of their topics through guidance um, and through a Project 365Z and the kindness piece in there too. So looking at maybe some service learning, so that's sort of still in development. But we've made a lot of progress. I feel like we can pretty calmly say, like, this is in progress and happily kind of check that off in the two-year report. And the kids seem to really be enjoying the programs too, which was nice because you know anytime you start something new, they kind of like, oh, what are we doing? We're sitting in circles and talking. But <laughs> the feedback has been really nice, awesome. and it's especially for us to get to follow these same kids two years in a row has been really nice to get to kind of see them grow and, and develop and mature. And again, another recommendation is a very minor one was just home bases should meet regularly. And like, okay, we've already done that on Wednesday. Like it's done. So yeah. like, cross it off the list like, right away. So. Um, so again, the, another recommendation just to, to talk about that we've already made progress on since um, the beginning of the school year was implementing a formal process based on school-wide rubrics to assess whole school programs and achieving the school's vision of a graduate. And so the 365Z program, uh, which Avery Pellegrino and Griffin Hanfield uh, have worked really hard on uh, to implement into the school culture, again, um, as Ali mentioned during the student report, was rolled out during homecoming and more is coming in the pipeline with that. But so far, students have been very receptive. And again, this is all building towards you know what our hope is of what a graduate from Auburn High School is going to look like uh, in the future. 
and of course Casey on a pumpkin, <laughs> carved on a pumpkin by Mr. Is Jeff that what they're going to look like? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so these are uh, these are just our closing uh, slides, and then all the pumpkins ended up by the garden in the back Almost. on the front yeah. school. So <laughs> and, fitting after yeah. all. Um, but we are happy to answer any questions, and um, yeah, and which means we really appreciate all of your support absolutely. in the process yes. and coming. Thank and we know again, it was a lot of you guys have busy lives too as well. So to give up your time and come be, be there that on Sunday. Sunday. Um, I know they really appreciate it and they spoke very highly of their conversations that they had with all of you and again really commended you multiple times and mentioned how lucky we were to have your support so you were, it was definitely recognized so thank you. I would just say that um, <clears throat> great presentation first of all and Spencer was concerned that, that it was going to be a tough act to follow but this was absolutely positive you know, and, and, and it was great and it's great to see it we don't get to see the ins and outs every day but to hear some of the finer details um, that's excellent. And, uh, and you always make a great presentation, the both of you, for better or worse. Um, but <laughs> no, <clears throat> we really enjoyed it. And um, Spencer, you made a comment. Actually, I think you both did that. It's it's community based, and the support that we get from the community. So as always, um, I'd like to take the opportunity to thank our residents and thank our community Absolutely. for the support that they give us, um, not only financially but all around. And that goes for the business community um, as a whole. Um, we really we do have some great support. So. All we do is really funnel it down um, into the schools. That that's kind of our position. We're kind of a middleman, so really we shouldn't get a, um, a lot of the thanks. We sit here um, a couple times a month, and, and you know, not to downgrade what we do, we do care and we do, we do put a lot into it. But yeah, it's it's the community. It's 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 a team effort, and what you guys have done is great. Um, to make a Niask visit seem as exciting as as you did. Um, <laughs> Really, great job. Our goal is to remain friends. We, we shook hands and signed a piece of paper and said we'll be friends at the end of this video. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, that, was, that was signed so. in 2015. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're, we're, we're still throwing the gloves on and swinging away at my school, so um, I don't know. We're, hopefully we, we fare as well. Mm -hmm. um, there are def certainly some, some things that are... Um, extremely positive in comparison to, to some of the things that we're going through so it's great to see that and also gives me some great ideas as to how you know we, we may be able to mend some things so Absolutely. thank we're you for that you that's great thank thanks a lot um, any other so, comments? Yeah, well, there's a giant, it's like, Halloween spider, spider right yeah. there. Yeah. Oh, that's Casey. <laughs> it's <right>. Yeah. <laughs> but aside from I'm that, so I bet it's just a decoration. Oh, my God. <laughs> 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 so anyway, that is going to be good. It is. Oh, it's fun. It's fun. Anyway, <laughs> the last presentation I, I, made, I this. made my heart happy, and this one made my heart happy as well. So thank you. And um, you said something about you know the authentic learning piece is huge. I think um, that says a lot about our community and the schools and even the vibe that I got when I went in there and um, you know their closing ceremonies or whatever the guy even said like he had a hard time coming up with negative things mm -hmm. you know like you guys just outdid yourselves and um, you continue to and the part about you know it's not a show for that day it just proof tonight was you know it's just an ongoing thing like all the time with the the care program and adopt a family and the kindness initiatives like all of those things is it's definitely not a show like you guys are in it to win it so mm -hmm. thank you so much I look forward to my kids going through Auburn High and experiencing these things thank you I just have one thing through the chair um, I am particularly interested in the home bases that you guys have started so if at some point maybe at the end of the year I know you guys will probably come back next year as well but I'd love to hear how implementation of that is going because it, it does sound like it's something like a lot of the kids need, particularly with an older, with the, you know, including the sophomores in it as well. Absolutely. Yeah. So I would love to hear more about that. Cause yeah. <laughs> we have a very lively home base, too, so I'm yeah, sure, sure we can easily round up some people we would love to come in and share. Okay. Yeah. Great. <laughs> <laughs> great. <laughs> okay, great. I'm sure they would love to come in and share as yeah. well. They're a lot of fun. Wonderful. Thank you. And thanks for all that you do. I mean, you know, we hope you're still here in 10 years, so. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> for the next one. <laughs> are those recent pumpkins? Um, so these were made. These are one year ago. Oh, so basically okay. today. Um, well, last week was the one year anniversary. Mm -hmm. So. We celebrated so, privately. 
Yeah. But I sent out this picture to the faculty at Auburn High School, and a lot of them were like, those pumpkins are still there from last year. Like, did, like how did Jeff do that? I was like, no, that's just an old picture. Old but, um, but yeah, Jeff Berg is a very talented. Mm. Yeah, oh, yes. Yeah. He yeah. comes from the Rhode Island. The, um, Roger right. Williams do the spectacular oh. down there. So oh, yeah. We enlisted him. We didn't know it would be our faces. We just no, asked yeah. him, like, a welcome pumpkin mm -hmm. and walked in. Sure enough, right. we were. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Any other comments or questions? Dr. Bernal. Just thank you both for all your tremendous work and Mr. Hanfield for your, your leadership. It was, uh, it was a proud uh, program that we attended last year and it's great. The, the report is indicative of the good work, the great work that happens there. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank very you. much. Thanks a lot. Yeah, Have a you. great Thanks evening. Awesome. Yes. Well. Oh, yeah, no, yep. leave that. Okay. Unfortunately, right. they have one more to say. Okay. <laughs> Thank you all so much. <laughs> so, I, as I was sitting in the audience tonight, I was just, you know, you don't have these moments often to kind of just sit in quiet and reflect. And so, as I was listening, and I, I was actually typing this out so I didn't forget. So, you know, you start with Amanda, you know, and she's going off to the University of Buffalo, you know, to preserve her passion, which is dancing. And, you know, you listen to Allie, and you listen to Aaron, and all the great things that they reported. And the nice part about when they come to you, um, you know, uh, to give the reports is, I don't hear a word of it. I don't. They don't come to me and like, you know, there's no briefing or <laughs> say this or don't say that or you know, they just come in unfiltered. And what you hear is exactly what you know. They just that's what they have to say. Um, and then you know, we we go all the way back to you know to Mrs. Deluca and Brenna and. Um, Emma and Elise, who Elise, by the way, is a school choice student. Um, mm. we, we don't really? plug school mm. choice enough. Mm. Um, this what time is? period that I was sitting here was was you know kind of a, a, a retrospective of the last 15 years, um, culminating with the NIAS report. When I took over in 2005, we had a visit in 2007. We had to open our building and host the visit. And at the end of that visit, I was handed. Um, 87 recommendations, not commendations, recommendations, mm -hmm. and I had to uh, answer 25 of those within six months, and then I had to keep putting together special progress reports, and in the midst of all that, it was just a ton of work, and uh, Melissa's been with me, you know, one of the few, I think there's 10 on the faculty of 63 that have been with me uh, during my tenure, Spencer came along a little bit later, um, but what Auburn Public Schools was in 2005 and what Auburn Public Schools is today in 2019 are very, very different places and it's a testament to the hard work that they do. It's a testament to the hard work that everyone does, you know, PK, you know, all the way through. Um, you're seeing the products. You're seeing the products. Um, and so I would be remiss if I didn't, you know, stand here and just point out some of those things um, because there's not, a few, there's not a lot of people around who remember the days when, you know, it wasn't so much fun. Um, <laughs> and it was a little rough there in, in 2005 to 2009. And Could I add one thing? Sure. And the community support since has been 2005 has, been has changed mm -hmm. tremendously. Absolutely. And that's made one of the biggest differences. Absolutely. I mean, mm -hmm. I remember times when they asked us to go to the town meeting and sit in the back and complain. Yeah about yeah. things and yeah it's just those it's just, days are it's long just gone. changed it's, it's just, just on a, it's just on a, a 365 it really and, has you know and it, it's like i said it's a testament to you know to the work, you know work that you've done uh, the people who've sat in your seats prior to that certainly dr Brunel, you know the stability that she's brought to the district um you know kathy lause prior to her um you know like i said just a wonderful faculty and staff it it's why we're in such a great place um but you know I don't. I want. I guess I want to underscore. We're in a great place, mm -hmm. but it wasn't always that way, and no. it's and it's for a variety of reasons that we're in such a great place. So, um, you know, it, it, it's easy to lead when things are going good, right? Yeah. Uh, but it's a little bit different when things are going going rough, and uh, we have some great leadership, uh, not just at the administrative level, but I think also, you know, in in the rank and file. And so, um, I just want to thank them because this was they did a yeoman's job. I mean. It, there's so much work behind the scenes, the hours, the writing, the dealing with, you know, just all these different factors, George, like you just stated, that you're going through now. I mean, it's just, it's, it's a process. Mm -hmm. And uh, they handled it with, with class and um, really got us through um, this visit and, and really the, the main reasons why it was so good. So, so thank you both very much. Um, 365Z, just real quick, uh, it's been thrown out a few times, um, will be coming. You don't know this yet, but we'll be coming um, <laughs> to talk about 365Z. Um, just r a real quick thumbnail. Uh, 365Z um, is a program that was started by um, the Ford family. Um, I believe they live in Leicester. Is that their residence? I'm not sure if they live in Leicester or, or Worcester. Worcester. Um, 
But their son, um, back in 2012, died tragically, and they were looking for ways to uh, keep their son's memory going. And a after his passing, a lot of people would stop by and, and talk to them and say, geez, you know, Zach, you know, helped me out and did this. And, you know, Zach just unabated, you know, came over and did this. Or, and they never knew these things about Zach and all these random acts of kindness that he did. And so to honor his memory and keep his spirit alive, they started the 365Z Foundation, which is do an act of kindness every day. Obviously, the Z is for their son, Zach. Um, it's sponsored in part by the Tarantino Foundation. Um, they actually came and spoke to us as, as administrators late last spring. Um, and the Auburn Police Department um, is also a, a sponsor of this program, too. Um, you know, as Spencer said, um, Avery Pellegrino um, is one of the real driving f forces in getting this going. And my son, um, I shouldn't be surprised, but I guess I am a little bit, uh, picked the folder up off the kitchen table um, and asked me a bunch of questions about it and then jumped right in with both feet. Um, so he and Avery um, are getting this up off the ground with the faculty assistance of Mr. Bonaccio and um, Catherine Perrault. And I'm just kind of overseeing it and just kind of, you know, making sure that the, the direction is, you know, is a solid one. But um, we're getting ready to uh, do some service related things. Um, and for us, it's about getting all of our kids not to just to do service, but to understand why they're doing it. Um, so, for example, you know, this next week we're going to be kicking off with the building um, a drive for veterans. Right. And so it's easy for us to do those types of things. But what's the why? Right. You get off the highway you know, over going to Grove Street or whatever, and you might see some folks, you know, from the Central Mass Veterans Shelter, you know, maybe, you know, with signs or asking for money, and, and you know, people just stereotypically think, oh, they're lazy, they're this, they're that. Well, that's not the case. They're there for a reason. They didn't, they weren't born into that intersection. What has happened in their life uh, to get them there? And how can we, as a group, recognize that issue and help the people who are supporting those folks help those folks. Um, so it's about educating our kids of what's the why. You know, it's great that we're bringing about why are we doing it and trying to just promote awareness. Um, and there'll be other themes throughout the year, but um, the group will come uh, probably when it, we have time, maybe once we get through the fun budget season, <laughs> um, you know, and, and talk about what the work they've done. Um, but it's, it's an exciting initiative and, and we're happy to get it going and more. Yeah, I'm talking about it when it's ready. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Any questions or comments from Mr. Hanfield before he leaves? And we're just lucky to have all of you in your, you know, volunteerism and the hours you put in. Oh, okay. No, you can leave it. And thanks yeah, if for you could pass so along, I know this makes pass along our really thanks to everyone who worked so. hard on the NIES um, in your building and across Thank the district. You. Thank you. Thank you. Have a Thank you. Have a nice evening. Thank you. <coughs> okay, moving along. So the next item on the agenda, uh, Mr. Jared Kahn, he is a um, one of the tech teachers at the middle school. He's actually going to be directing the play here. They plan to present Aladdin this year in January. So they have the opportunity to go down and see uh, Aladdin perform live at the Providence uh, Performing Arts Center. It's an evening performance. Uh, we'll be providing a bus. There will be many parents who will be driving to join them as well. But it is my recommendation that you approve that trip. I will entertain that motion. Make a motion to approve the AMS trip to see a performance of Aladdin at Second. in Providence. Second. Any discussion? Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 This is a vote. <coughs> the next item to make you aware that Mrs. Mahan, Bryn Mawr principal, let us know that um, Bryn Mawr School is the recipient of a generous donation of school supplies from Webster Five Bank. Uh, a thank you letter is included in your packet, and it's my recommendation that you accept that with gratitude. I would entertain that motion. Make a motion to accept with gratitude the generous donation of school supplies from Webster Five in Auburn. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 It is a vote. Included in your packet is the first quarter report for the Southern Worcester County Educational Collaborative. Um, it notes, Mr. as I've shared with you, Interim Director uh, Alan Himmelberger put this together with his team, uh, and you don't need to approve it, but you do need to accept it. I would entertain that motion. Make a motion to accept the SWCC second 
quarter report for the period of July to September 2019. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 There's a vote. Quick question. How many students, I was reading the report, mm -hmm. how many of those students are Auburn's? I believe currently we have four. Four. Right mm -hmm. there, yes. Different levels? Um, level? Yes, yeah. but um, it's all secondary. Oh, okay. Currently. Yes. Thank all you. Secondary. Yes. Uh, the next item, um, Swanson Road received um, a donation. So you have a copy of a letter sent to Sally Dark Angelo. Actually, Swanson made a donation um, representing $150 that they donated from the proceeds of the Swanson Community Caring Program for the month of September. So um, staff members, if they wore jeans, donated a dollar. So kudos to them um, for sending that to Auburn Youth and Family Services as a donation. Great. Great. The next item I just included in your packet, as you know, um, I mentioned again at the Fall Special Town Meeting, uh, Dr. Martha Pappas and the Pappas Foundation is funding every student attending a Hanover production. Um, all of Swanson Road went to it together. It was uh, rave reviews, circ mechanics, and she included copies of letters of thanks to the Pappas Foundation, to the PTO for funding transportation, and to Mr. Ern and Wine from AA for providing a reduced rate, so great team effort. My daughter loved it. Oh, good. Everyone has oh, just awesome. said so the best yeah, things. she's in fourth grade. Yeah. She just came home flabbergasted. Yeah, so, that's, yeah, awesome. that's awesome. wonderful to they hear. They love going all together, too. Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. She felt very cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, next item, more, more good news. So we were notified um, once again this um, early fall by St. Vincent Hospital, Joy Lapidus, the, uh, the volunteer services coordinator that we had this year four students um, during the summer of 19 who donated 50 plus hours um, to St. Vincent Hospital. So I want to recognize them. We have Amy Lee, Avery Pellegrino, Caleb um, Skopetsky, and Julia Zona. So um, letters of congratulations were sent to each of them for their tremendous work That's uh, and selfless donation. And then finally, um, through the Food Services Administrative Review that happened last year, as noted in your packet, there was uh, one minor finding. It was really some inappropriate coding. The issue has been um, rectified and resolved, but did want to make you aware um, that that had, had come through. Thank you. Okay, and now we'll move on to unfinished business. Just a reminder that we head to uh, Hyannis for the, s some of us do, for the School Committee Superintendent Conference uh, and look forward to doing that. Uh, again. The Auburn Street redesign, uh, as you know, a couple of town meeting members came before you um, just prior to town meeting a couple of weeks ago and raised concerns about two issues uh, with the Auburn Street redesign. The crosswalk in front of Auburn High School getting across Auburn Street and also the guardrail um, in Drury Square um, protecting from the tennis courts and basketball courts. So we had a pre-meeting in, in our office uh, initially, Dr. Chamberlain, myself, Mr. Fahey, uh, and Mrs. Worsbicki. We looked at the plans, um, and it seemed that the, the crosswalk was probably being positioned in the best place, um, but we wanted to follow up with Mr. Coyle. Um, so we met with him actually just yesterday. He showed us the plans. Um, in attendance was Mr. Hanfield, myself, and Dr. Chamberlain and Mr. Coyle and, and Ms. Um, Jacobson as well. So he outlined for us, and I think they were the 25% complete drawings at that point. Um, I've invited him to come to the school committee meeting of November 19th. He's gonna show the presentation. At that point, it will be the 75% complete um, engineer drawings, but the three of us concurred in looking at it based on other factors, the left turn lane going into um, the high school, that it, the crosswalk could not be placed in there because there'll be some through traffic coming the other way. He certainly will be able to um, outline it much clearer, um, and he's going to have uh, pictures, obviously, for you to see those. But we felt that the location of it really was, did appear to be appropriate. It does not, per the drawing, actually have students going right into the um, the exit of the drive through okay. there. Uh, it's a little bit up from there. And we did ask about making sure, if you drive by there, it's a really very small congested area. It is. There. Um, but to make sure that the sidewalk on the McDonald Street side extended all the way to Walsh Ave because it doesn't currently. So that would be part of it as well. Um, so he will come, but we, we felt 
very good having seen that oh, good. Uh, in terms of in the Drury Square area they seems they have decided against a guardrail but instead putting crash resistant bollards in because the Department of Transportation is won't pay for as my understanding and he'll explain it better for guardrails if they don't deem them to be necessary but we feel as a town that it does need to be some protection between cars if they went in so these bollards would be put um, in place so I did update both Mr. Largess and Mr. Chanette today with an update about this and told them about the November 19th meeting but just wanted to share that we're continuing to look at it and I think on the 19th I think you may feel um, the same level of comfort that we did but I it to don't our understand meeting. what are they trying what are those things they're going to replace the guardrail with? Um, so they're large um, structures that you see so that way there'll be distance um, close enough that a vehicle couldn't get in and it would stop a vehicle oh. if it was to go in. Um, so we actually have them uh, along the middle school and at the high school we used to have them. They weren't real secure ones but now instead we have planters so they're really acting as a bollard that a car couldn't get through oh. in that area there and I believe they're going to be black. Okay. at least at the time being so right. but I think we felt we felt good having seen it yep. okay yeah. put flashing yeah. lights and stuff there will be okay. there will be flashing lights um, currently it appears that there may be an elevated um, rise to it there's one down at Institute Park Road uh, by Worcester uh, Polytechnic but that's um, in consideration but there will be absolutely flashing lights and things and, and you know students will need to be taught you know you press the button before you walk across and the lights flash and you wait till it's till it triggers right, <laughs> right, right. And don't, don't I press and go and if, if this ship may have sailed already yep. I, I run down there mm -hmm. frequently it's very narrow even to put a, just a, a regular um, sidewalk mm -hmm. but when you see kids that are actually crowded around is there any way that I, I don't know if you if we even have the easement to do it but if it could be wider there the the actual sidewalk because when mm -hmm. people are trying to get across I mean kids are spilling out I mean when they're the coming street. out of the high school, you're saying the sidewalk yeah. isn't wide enough right there? I'm saying if they're going to be doing anything, especially if they're going to be adding that, extending the sidewalk all the way over to be in front of McDonald's so that it goes all the way up, mm -hmm. and there's not a lot of space, I would just say that if it's not wide enough, we're still going to have kids in the street. So just, and I would say ride it wider than our, the normal regulation sidewalk. I would say uh, right um, jot down any of those ideas that you have, take a ride by the by the site, look yeah. at the crosswalks. Um, based on what you've heard, the last couple of meetings, just take a look around if you have an opportunity. If you if you have the opportunity to get down there when school lets out and sort of take a look at what's going on, and then we can come back and ask those questions at the meeting during the presentation from from Bill Coyle. And um, I don't know at what stage of the project they're in. The plans are 75 percent um, complete I don't know that that means they're finalized I, I mean uh, is, is it a rough draft that's complete a rough drawing um, maybe we have some opportunities to, to have some things added I'm not sure how that works maybe we have to go to another meeting if we come to a consensus that we would like something added so just just jot some things down and be ready to ask him some questions even if they're difficult questions and through the chair mm -hmm. and also we have to be held accountable by to educate these kids that that area mm -hmm. is you know mm -hmm. narrow and mm -hmm. push the button and I know it seems silly but high schoolers oh, it's true you know mm -hmm. automatic pilot mm -hmm. for their mm -hmm. frap or whatever right. so right. <laughs> right. Kind of it's a educate. priority yeah. yes yeah. Yeah. they did say it was going to be handicap accessible mm -hmm. there too correct oh good correct so, yeah. so I suspect that'll influence yeah. the right. size yeah. of it too yep okay Okay, and now move on to new business. So I wanted to make you aware, if you remember at the annual town meeting, and we included it in your packet, a warrant article that you had unanimously supported and then um, was supported by town meeting as well. So that we're able to, um, if we had the programming, to tuition students in. Well, we were actually outreached by the Leicester Public Schools, and they have a student um, for whom they do not have what they deem to be uh, appropriate programming and they are very interested in the program that we have at the high school actually it's the evolve program so i wanted to make you aware of this it would come at a cost uh, we are working on that value they're actually hoping to the family to come and make a visit uh, later this week and it really is uh, it would be for a program for um, some of our most special students 
um, that you heard from tonight with that uh, unified program. So not surprising that they want um, to come. So I will keep you updated uh, with that, but that would be a, a good thing. It would not require any additional staff on our part at all. It would really be a complete benefit to us because we have the space um, in the program. So it's a cost for them, not for It's us. a cost for them. Yeah. We would get it and we'd actually be able to deposit those funds into um, the revolving account and then use it to offset some special education costs in the district. So, oh, great. Two, true win win. Sure. And Lester would be responsible for transportation to and from? C completely. Yeah. And the contract that we're uh, working on creating that if ever um, student enrollment became such that we couldn't support the child, we have the right to have the child leave. So it's always, it's, it's advantageous to the district. Um, obviously, we wouldn't want to do that, but no. if there was an influx um, of students, but it really is very airtight to support um, the schools and our students, but also to give this student an opportunity in which I believe this child could thrive. Mm -hmm. Good. And it's That's a great. testament to our program to how great it is. Through the chair, completely. So completely. Yeah. Um, the next item, just wanted to make you aware, the 2020 Citizens Leadership Academy uh, will be upcoming. The schools will actually be presenting in April on the 16th. In the last two years, I, I did the presentation myself last year. Uh, the year prior, Dr. Lose joined me um, for a portion. It was held at the middle school. We gave a tour of the middle school and a tour of the high school. But um, particularly, and I, I think Dr. Chamberlain may have had the um, idea around this, with eighth grade, um, working on civics education so to really include students and I think it would be much more interactive um, not that well I would suspect that people maybe were tired of my voice after two <laughs> and a half hours quite honestly and, and I would welcome the students coming so the two of us will work together on that and include students so we're excited um, excited for that so uh, and the next item just to get it in a motion um, from you we are going to change the Budget presentations from the 12th and 13th of November to the 18th and 19th. So I would recommend that motion so we can make all of the noted changes. I would entertain that motion. I make a motion to approve the change in the meeting schedule for the budget budget presentation from November 12th and 13th to November 18th and 19th. Second. Any discussion? <coughs> Going to miss a dance fundraiser for that, but oh. um, <laughs> just write him a big check. Yeah. <laughs> yes. All in favor? Aye. 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 There's a vote. And finally, under upcoming events, um, so several of them, this is a really busy weekend for activities that took place. You heard some of the things from the student uh, representatives, but also just want to do another plug for the program. It's not listed here, but on November 21st at 6 o'clock, it should be a great event at Auburn High School to raise some money. So for the unified basketball team against uh, athletes from across the staff. Is that in the, the afternoon or Six o'clock. Oh, six o'clock. Six o'clock, yes. I'm sorry, what was the date of that? November 21st. Okay, yeah. Thursday. Is it all high school staff? Or mm -hmm. No, the staff from across the district oh. who are going to play. Oh, great. Mm. So they're, they're still, I, I, their goal, I, I, I believe they, they will accomplish it. I don't know if they have yet, but they want some representatives from each of the schools. So. I believe it will be a packed night, quite honestly. Yeah. Mm. It should be. It yeah, should, should be yeah. a lot of fun. Yeah. And before we move on to teaching and learning um, under new business, would it be possible for us to get an official thank you to the staff for their hard work on the NEASC? I'm sure that um, Spencer and Mr. Hanfield are going back and probably will mention it to a couple of people, but to get something official, if that's okay oh, with the yeah, committee. Oh, yeah, great idea. Uh, because we always say, please pass it along, P please mm -hmm. pass it along, but um, do we know that all of them and some of the ones who really worked hard are actually getting that message? Mm -hmm. I'd be happy to do that. And now we move on to teaching and learning. to report that I'll have more good news. <laughs> I'm not sure it's going to be as engaging or exciting as the presentations <laughs> that came previously, so I apologize for that. 
but I do hope that with some brevity, um, I, I'm able to just share with you some of the outcomes from the MCAS from, this, uh, from 2019. I just want to start with a quote because I think this is important when we talk about MCAS. Test scores and measures of achievement, achievement tell you where a student is, but they don't tell you where they could end up. So when you think of all the things that were talked about here tonight, kindness initiatives and unified sports and a, a hundred other things that could have, they could have talked about with ask and everything else, um, this is just one, one drop in the bucket of what happens in the Auburn Public Schools. So that's, that being said, we will uh, move on. So um, this is kind of a housekeeping thing. The Department of Ed has uh, kind of made that goal that all of these tests are going to be administered electronically. These are the tests that um, they did this year, the grades three through eight, all of the tests, grades five and eight, the science, technology, and engineering, grade 10, ELA, and math. Um, you know, and we are so well positioned because of your support to participate in this at a high level electronically um, because of your commitment to providing students with all the technology they need. And so what our goal is is to make sure that they are well prepared to test in that electronic environment, right, which is always the ongoing challenge because we were talking earlier, right, we sometimes prefer that book in our hands and this is a different way to show what they know. So thank you for that. Um, the achievement levels, and I'm not going to read through all of these, but these are similar to what they were le last year where students uh, received either exceeding expectations, meeting, partially meeting, or not meeting expectations. And I won't go into all the details with that. Um, these are our achievement scores for this school year. And as you have been throughout the course of this evening tonight, there's a lot to be proud of. Uh, so what I've done is I've summarized, these are our all students, the percent of students exceeding and meeting expectations, and in each grade level, in each category, ELA, math, and science, um, you can see the percentage of students in Auburn, for instance, in grade three at 67% that either exceeded or met expectations compared to the state average of 56%. So I won't go through all of these, but I will tell you all of them, in all cases, we do exceed the state average. Um, so that has, there's a lot to be proud of there. Um, now given that, already much analysis of this data has gone on. This is kind of that high level picture of the data, but in all the schools, um, teachers and principals have been working to dig further, dig in deeper. How are our subgroups doing and all of that? Um, and from that, these deep dives into student performance, um, what's happened in each subject, what questions did kids do well on or did they not do well on? Did we do well in open response? And certainly, there are kids in all of those areas that did really well and others not so much, right? So what's our responsibility is to look at our instruction, to look at the remediation that specific children need and how can we adjust what we do each day so that we can do better in that way. And so really, this data for us is just a never-ending cycle. It's analysis, it's refinement, it's improvement. It's how can we, because our students are different every year, so, right? So the same instruction isn't always going to work for every child. Um, but that's uh, principals and staff over the last, we had uh, some faculty meeting time and on the last uh, PD day, they spent some time really digging into all of this. So a lot of good information. I think one of the things that you might be familiar with is the accountability system, which is somewhat new in the last couple of years, so I'll go through this briefly. Um, but this is typically what gets shared in the newspapers, right, uh -huh. when the MCAS first comes out. Um, and once again, we have a lot to be proud of. So the accountability system as designed is to measure school and district performance and to kind of boil it down to two questions. How is the school doing? And what kind of support does the school need to, to improve? So some highlights of the system give a variety of indicators that they look at. So they're not just looking at MCAS scores when the accountability measure comes out. The indicators that provide more information do include student achievement. They also include student progress or growth, right? We now talk about student growth uh, percentiles. <coughs> um, the number of stu students in a cohort who are completing high school uh, our English learners and their progress toward English profici proficiency, is chronic absenteeism an issue in a district, as well as what are the opportunities for advanced coursework completion at the high school level. 
So information on the school's progress toward targets that have been set. For us, the target was set last year. Um, and we're also compared to other districts across the state. Um, and increasingly, uh, the Department of Ed does to try to provide us with information about our lowest performing students specifically, so that they help us kind of dig down to make sure that we're meeting their needs as well. So that's a, all, everything that goes into how that accountability rating is determined. So schools are then placed into categorized and that describe how they're doing. And this is the scale. I don't know if you can see it up here, but it goes from uh, you know, schools that need broad and comprehensive report to schools who uh, schools of recognition. And for this year, Auburn uh, sits in that substantial progress toward our targets. That's a district rating as well as the rating for the three schools who receive that: the Auburn High School, Auburn Middle School, um, and Swanson Road, because there uh, the students are tested. Obviously, Bryn Mawr School and Pathachon don't get that, thankfully. <laughs> Um, I shared this statistic as it was widely publicized in the Telegram and Gazette uh, back on September 24th. And along with this data, so it's showing our uh, target percentage from 2018 at 32% up to 77%. And the quote in the paper said, the Auburn school system, which according to the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education, was one of two districts in the state that saw the greatest improvement in meeting their accountability targets since last year. Auburn saw one of the biggest jumps for district and accountability target percentage, a new metric <coughs> intended to measure school and district's performance progress, going from 32% to 77%. So, remarkable, right? So, and we're just gonna take one little deeper dive into that because there's this whole point rating system that they use for this. So, when we looked at our student achievement, we could have earned 12 points, <coughs> we earned 10 of those points. In the area of growth, we could have earned eight, we earned six. Our English language learners earned three out of four possible points in this rating system. Our dropout rate was excellent, where we earned four out of four points. And students at the high school having access to advanced coursework, again, we earned four out of four of those points. So those, that's really just kind of how they break down that whole big picture of how that accountability um, plays out. So, you know, data doesn't mean anything if you don't do anything with it. So, again, principals have actively reviewed and analyzed the data with their teachers and their support staff. And some of the action plans include, you know, looking at those content areas where we need to modify or enhance our instruction. We've already identified students who, based on their uh, performance, might need remediation or extension activities because perhaps they scored very well. Uh, we're looking, continue to look at test taking strategies um, and making sure that there's a consistency from when they go from Swanson up to the middle school so it's not a, a whole new kind of approach for them um, as well as incorporated in there their strategies for taking a test online, right, which presents its own set of skills that kids need. But what we also know is none of these are going to happen unless we take them as a team. So we're going to continue to play emphasis on the growth of all students in every subgroup. We continue to analyze instruction and curriculum materials to make sure they're meeting what students need for high achievement. We continue to focus on the absentee rate. Um, we feel like that's an area where we can always improve and, and Dr. Brunel has led us as schools to make sure that we spend a lot of time looking at kids' attendance. and. Uh, following up and calling and meeting with families and why aren't they here and what's going on and trying to dig into some of those things. So um, that's something that will continue to be our focus um, and as well as at the, at the upper uh, grade levels that advance coursework. I know they're always looking at improving that. So those are some of the things we're working on. And so we're thankful for the hard work. You know, all of this happens as a team, right? It's principals, it's teachers, it's support staff, it's everybody that leads to these results. Um, but again, remember, it's a moment in time for our kids, right? It's that one day that they sat and took that test. And, and this quote says, you know, authentic student achievement can't be measured just by test scores, but also by the small day-to-day -day moments of each student's individual triumphs, mm -hmm. right? And we know those triumphs, just from what we heard tonight, take shape in a huge variety of ways. Um, so, you know, we're pleased with the results. 
but I don't know with the culture that's here in Auburn, and we're always like, oh, but well, what can we do? How can we get better? How can we fix that? Um, and I think that's a testament to the leadership in the district and to the hardworking staff that we have, that we're never just going to kind of rest on our laurels. It's always about how can we improve. So I don't know if you have any questions for me, but that's it. Any questions for Dr. Jamblin? I have a comment. Just, um, you know, authentic keeps coming up, and I think it's kind of the theme of the mm -hmm. night. Mm -hmm. This is like mm -hmm. Auburn mm -hmm. and, you know, real life kind of weighs a lot more than these MCAS scores. Not that they're not important, but, you know, I tell my kids when they're going into these tests, like, do the best you can, but in the at the end of the day, it's, you know, have you been good to your friends? Have you been good to others? And I think those are, mm -hmm. those life skills are way more important. So not to discredit that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, and I don't think the, I don't think the state, um, I don't think the Department of Ed actually gets a good look at what we do. They they mm -hmm. come in every ten years, as as we just saw, and um, and they do some reports and they miss a lot of things and they catch a lot of things as well. Mm -hmm. However, um, back to the authentic piece, they don't see what's going on. They don't see all the wonderful things mm -hmm. that we get to see, and it's inspiring. And I think that's a, a big part of. Um, the reason that we do what we do, mm -hmm. because it's it is inspirational. So again, thanks to our, our our staff for everything that they put into it, and as you said, um, never resting on their laurels. And, and we know that we know that's the case. And thank you for that presentation. Thank you. It was thank two you. tough acts to follow, but yeah. you did very well. My heart is still happy. So. <laughs> yeah. that's good. And the spider's dead. And the yeah. spider's oh. dead. Yes. <laughs> I hope. Mm. <laughs> I do have to say through the chair, as I have a daughter, second grade, so she hasn't taken a nervous test taker. I have to, she's nervous at school, and teachers will just take her and walk her down, and let's go for a walk. Let's, mm -hmm. and that shows in the test scores. Mm -hmm. Like she, mm -hmm. she's chiller now because mm -hmm. of the support she's gotten in the yeah. schools. So, yeah. I mean, support that's staff, great. teachers, everyone is amazing. Um, yep. I think that's part of the reason why mm -hmm. these scores are so high. Mm -hmm. The social emotional piece. And even, Absolutely. sorry, through the chair, even allowing kids to stand when they're mm -hmm. tested. Mm -hmm. yeah, I know the middle mm -hmm. school, that's one of the yeah. things. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Those little things go a long way for mm -hmm. these kids and their anxiety. So mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. great that we recognize that. And I think connect, connected to that is teachers who are happy. Mm -hmm. um, and we, yeah. we, we were able to see a few tonight, um, but mm -hmm. um, there are many more who are happy when they mm -hmm. pull up in front of their buildings um, every day. So that's, that's huge. The, the kids... Um, get a sense of that, especially when they're under pressure situations. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. I think Spencer kind of hit on it too, right? So this is just what we do, and we think this is what happens everywhere. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, you know, I mean, he was referring to the to the iPad initiative, but there are a lot of things that fall into mm -hmm. that category here. Mm -hmm. A lot of things that happen here that don't happen in other places. Mm -hmm. um, some of these supports, right? That a teacher mm -hmm. will walk somebody down the hall. That we make sure kids can stand, that, and they seem like minor things, but when they don't take place, they can have a big impact on a child's experience and their performance but that happens here regularly so we just see it as part of what we do mm -hmm. you yeah. know mm -hmm. it's great as you guys like to say we like to create lifetime learners mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. that might not mean that they do great on MCAS but yeah. they are happy about what they've learned and they understand mm -hmm. it and they can carry the concepts forward and really yeah. that's what counts and at the forward. same time our scores are pretty good yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. absolutely absolutely <laughs> <laughs> it all ties together. Yeah. And now we move on to business and financial. So two items on Mrs. Wordsbicki's behalf. First, the year-to-date budget report. Uh, we feel comfortable and confident uh, in our current state. Uh, be happy to answer any questions. And then also the transfers uh, that I do recommend um, for your approval. I would entertain that motion. I make a motion to approve the transfers between the series as provided by Dr. Burnell. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 It is a vote. Any discussion under business and financial? <laughs> okay. We now move on to personnel. So we were remiss in bringing forward to you a permanent substitute um, teacher mm -hmm. job description. As you know, one is being shared between Bryn Mawr and the Pakachog schools. This has been um, vetted by a number of us, including the principals of those schools, and I do recommend um, approve it. I would entertain that motion. Make the motion to approve the job description for the permanent substitute position as presented. Second. So, all in favor? Aye. 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 There's a vote. 
through the chair. I actually just have a question. It's not sure. that I won't change the vote, but um, we said it was just going to be for Fred Amar and Kat. So through the chair. Now. I just asked because other. Through the chair, it is um, currently we just have one permanent substitute in the district. But what we thought was, if we listed down all of the times, that should we in the future expand, we wouldn't need to modify the job description. Okay. But okay. it's only a permanent path. Yes. Okay. Thank you. No one did that too. Okay. okay. And now move on to policies. So included in your packet, um, there are two, three actual groupings um, of policies. So the first. Um, grouping are ones that have either no changes or very minor changes that are noted uh, in red. So those are the first six policies that I do recommend that you approve as presented. I want to entertain that motion. I'll make a motion to approve the above named policies as presented. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 This is a vote. The next one we have two uh, policies IJ R and KEC. And each of these um, are just for you to approve. You approved them on first reading on October 2nd, so we need a second reading from you approval. I would entertain that motion. Make a motion to approve the above named policies on second reading. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 There's a vote. And then finally, policy KA1. Um, for elimination it, because it is embedded in other ones, namely KBA and KA. This as recommended by MASC. I would entertain that motion. I'll make a motion to eliminate the above named, uh, above mentioned policies from the school committee policy book as they no longer recognize or recommend by MASC. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 There's a vote. And we do need an executive session? We do, yes. I would entertain that motion. I'll make a motion that we go into executive session as per Mass General Law, Chapter 30, Section 21A2, to conduct strategies for negotiations with union and non-union personnel, and Section 21A3, to discuss strategy with regard to collective bargaining or litigation um, if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigating position of the public body, and the chair so declares. Do I have a second? A second. Roll call vote. Mrs. Yes. Mrs. Yes. Mrs. Yes. Mrs. Yes. 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 Yes.